Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to pre pre present my research from the OG Cancer Unit in Newcastle. Treatment for advanced esophageal adenocarcinoma usually involves new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by radical surgery with a two-stage esophagectomy and radical two-field lymphadenectomy. Esophagectomy still carries significant morbidity and mortality. We can now safely treat early cancers with endoscopic resection and endoscopic surveillance follow-up. This only applies to mucosal disease. Submucosal disease carries a 12 to 20% risk of lymph node metastases, and for this reason, we recommend radical surgery in these patients. Esophageal adenocarcinoma spreads to both abdominal and mediastinal lymph node fields. The sentinel lymph node concept is that the first lymph node or nodes that drain the cancer are the most likely sites of early metastases. Now, whether these sentinel nodes contain metastatic disease will predict the overall status of the entire lymphatic field. We've previously presented work here in the context of open surgery that in esophageal adenocarcinoma this concept works. A minimally invasive technique of identifying central nodes potentially could revolutionize surgery in terms of allowing patients with submucosal disease to be treated with endoscopic resection and as a staging procedure, this would then prevent unnecessary esophagectomy and its inherent risks in over 80% of patients. And not only that, potentially we could individualize surgery by allowing us to determine the extent of the required lymphadenectomy, potentially deciding on the type of resection, and also allow a pathologist to focus on a more in-depth analysis of the central nodes. So this is the algorithm we're really looking towards. So an added step where a minimally invasive technique of identifying central nodes and those with submucosal disease and negative central nodes could be safely followed up with endoscopic surveillance, avoiding the need for radical surgery. So we tested the feasibility of identifying abdominal central nodes laparoscopically in patients with esophageal adenocarcinoma and wanted to show that whether this in isolation or in combination with identifying open mediastinal central nodes could predict the overall lymph node status. This was a world first study specifically looking at esophageal adenocarcinoma and a minimally invasive technique of identifying these central nodes. Consecutive patients with a histological diagnosis of esophageal or esophageal junction adenocarcinoma planned for curative two-stage esophagectomy were included. Our only exclusion criteria were patients that were deemed unsuitable for laparoscopy. All surgeons followed standardized operating protocol with a two-stage esophagectomy and two-field lymphadenectomy. Identification took place immediately prior to surgery, immediately prior to resection, so that uh, we endoscopically injected technetium above and below the tumor uh, into the submucosal layer. This was followed by laparoscopy. And, you, and using a laparoscopic gamma probe, we took readings from all abdominal lymph node stations. The rest of surgery continued as standard, and we repeated uh, gamma probe readings in the open setting from the abdomen, the mediastinum, and the ex vivo. We used the proven definition of a central node of in vivo, twice background radioactivity, confirmed ex vivo, more than 10 times background radioactivity. Myself and a specialist upper GI pathologist examined all nodes uh, using H&E from overt metastases and immunohistochemistry for isolated tumor cells and micrometastases. We recruited 40 patients over one year. As you can see, two thirds of our patients clinically had T3 node positive disease and a quarter had T1 or T2 node negative disease. There were no complications related to the endoscopic injection or the laparoscopic procedure. We examined almost 1,300 lymph nodes, 652 from the abdomen, and 645 from the mediastinum. We had a median lymph node harvest of 31 per patient. When we consider the laparoscopic identification of this central nodes, we see that we managed to do this in 23 of the 40 patients. In these 23 patients, two of them, only two, actually had only abdominal central nodes. 21 actually had central nodes across both sides of the diaphragm. 
There were a number of patients in whom we couldn't identify laparoscopic sentinel nodes, 11 because their sentinel nodes were up in the mediastinum, five because there were no sentinel nodes. The overall median sentinel nodes that we identified was six. If we concentrate just on the abdominal side of things, so we had 40 patients, we successfully identified laparoscopic sentinel nodes in 23, giving us a detection rate of 58. The overall nodal station of the entire field was positive in 13. So if we look back on the laparoscopic sentinel node status, 10 were positive and would have correctly predicted the status, but three were negative, so there were three false negatives. This gives us an overall sensitivity of 77%. Interestingly, two of these patients had other non-sentinel abdominal nodes that were positive. If we look at the entire fields, so both fields now, so we have 40 patients, we identify sentinel nodes in 34, which gives us a detection rate of 85%. Of the 17 positive patients, the sentinel node would have correctly predicted the status in 15, giving us a sensitivity of 88%. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, laparoscopic identification of abdominal sentinel lymph nodes using a radioactive isotope is feasible and safe, but currently in isolation cannot be used to tailor our management in clinical practice. We recognize that in future, we must identify mediastinal central lymph nodes to allow us to achieve sensitivity. But in this week, when patient-centered care is the focus of the meeting, we do believe in future we'll have a minimally invasive detection technique that will allow us to tailor our management. Thank you to everyone involved in this study.